Do you want to go to school for industrial design? Do you need to put together a portfolio to get in? Well, this video is about how to get your portfolio ready for applying to industrial design programs in colleges or universities. My name is Jason, and I'm an industrial design professor and director of industrial design at Western Washington University. I review about 100 portfolios a year from students who are recent high school graduates or first and second year college students. Our ID program is small and we only accept about 20 per year. So that means we have to choose the top 20% into the program. So here are my tips for assembling, editing, and designing your ID portfolio. I will talk about one, collecting your work to selecting your best work. Three, documenting your work. And four, designing your portfolio. And you'll only need two tools, a smartphone and a Google account. And if you have access to them, you can use a higher quality camera, like a DSLR, a scanner, and a clean piece of foam core. But they aren't necessary. Number one, collecting your work. First is to gather up all your creative works. We love seeing diversity of creative projects. So that could mean paintings, drawings, ceramics, woodworking, models, CAD models, photography, robots, animation, videos, design projects, fashion design, illustrations, both digital and analog. You can also include work from an intro engineering class, like a cardboard bridge or a paper tower or a 3D printing project. ID uses a variety of skills in media, and we don't expect to see high level design projects, but we are looking for things that demonstrate your creativity, visual aesthetics, and material understanding. What about AI? Should you include work made with AI, like Midjourney or Stable Diffusion? No. This is your portfolio, not AI's portfolio. And we want to see what you can do. So, look through your projects, find them, gather them together, 2D, 3D, physical, and digital. Part two, selecting your best work. Now, what do you put in? Selecting and editing what pieces you include is really critical. So, find an outside opinion of someone you trust. Maybe it's your art teacher, or your designer aunt, or your architect uncle. Someone who is trained in art and design. Even friends can help. You want them to be brutally honest with you which is why choosing your parents is probably not usually the best idea. Show them your work. Ask them which is your strongest. What is your weakest? Why? E cutthroat. But what if you don't have someone like that to help? Well, here are some questions to ask yourself. One, are you proud of it? Do you consider it one of your best? Two, did you get some award or recognition for it? Is it original and creative work, as opposed to imitating another artist or designer or copying a photograph? Does it show some problem solving? Your drawings, do they exhibit some sketching skills? Do they show perspective? Do they show line quality composition? And about drawing, if you're applying to Western, we have a new sketching exercise that we'd like you to do and include in your portfolio. The details for that are on our website, and I'll put a link in the description. On your 3D work, does it show a good sense of form development? Are you showing a good use of color in your two-dimensional work? Select your best work from a variety of media and types of projects. Aim for about seven pieces or so. And don't only select everything of one type. For example, don't only include photography, but not show any drawings or any 3D work or something digital. Okay, three, documenting your work. 
Okay, now you have your seven or so best pieces. So now you have to document them and put them in your portfolio. That means photographing or scanning it in high quality. So first let's talk about 2D work. If it's flat and the size of standard paper, then the best method is to scan it on a flatbed scanner. If you have one, learn how to use it and scan your stuff. If you don't, that's okay. You can use a photo scanning app on your phone. I've used Google Photo Scan and it's free. And first you set the work down on a table and make sure there's lots of light. Beside a big window is best. And you can also do it outside. One thing you might notice when you compare scanning with a flatbed scanner or an app on your phone is that the flatbed scanner will do a better job, but the photo scanning app does pretty well. Scan the photos or drawings or paintings. Make it rectangular, not a distorted polygon. Use outside light because indoor light will be too yellow. And if the paper is white, it should be white in the image not yellow or gray or blue. Then crop the edges. Adjust the image. And typically auto exposure will turn your white page into gray. So you will need to up the exposure and the contrast. Now let's talk about three dimensional work. Now don't photograph it by your bed next to your dirty laundry with indoor light. Find a big window and a nice clean table or the floor. Take everything out of the background, put the window to the side and have a blank wall behind your objects or a panel of white foam core. No wrinkly bed sheets, please. And don't get really close to it and take a wide angle shot. Step back, lower the camera, zoom in. Take multiple shots at different angles and then look at, take a look at what you've got. Make sure you edit your photos. Select the best ones, crop out the extra stuff around it, adjust the contrast, adjust the brightness, adjust the color, and look at them very closely. Okay, now you've documented your work, you have some great photos. Next is to put it all together into a portfolio. Now we require either a PDF or a website. First I'll talk about creating a PDF portfolio and then we'll get into the website. There are several programs that can help you do that, like InDesign, Illustrator, PowerPoint, and others. But for free, you can use Google Slides. First, set up some grid lines, make a consistent margin for each page, and pick a background color of white, black, or gray. You can drop your images onto the page and adjust them to align with your margins. You can fit multiple images on a page that support that project. Then write a title, the media, the overall size, and when it was done and also how long it took you to do it. Was that a 30 minute drawing or a one month painting? And what software did you use? Add a short description of it. Don't write too much. The more text, the less likely we are to read it. Put that small in the corner of the page. Pick one font and use it throughout. And use that format for every page. Don't add decorations or borders or clip art or stars or extra graphics to your page. 
Why? Because we want to see your work and not be distracted by anything else. Keep it minimal. One project per page, and if it's an extensive project, then give it two pages. Do that for each project, then export it as a PDF. Don't send us the Google file. Website. Putting your work on a website is another option. Perhaps more work, but easily editable. And there are a number of companies that will offer free websites with limitations. Regarding graphic layout, the advice is the same. Clean, minimal, simple, consistent. One thing to be aware of is the size of your images will affect download time. You don't need to have an image that's over 2,000 pixels wide. Typical monitors are HD 1920 by 1080, so more than that is extremes. After you're done, check how it looks on another computer or laptop. The text may be off or misaligned. So check your images for brightness and contrast. Finished, okay, now you're done. Send it off before the deadline. And by the way, this will take a long time to do. You won't get it done in one day. It will take several days, if not a couple weeks. So don't procrastinate and get started today.